Man not afraid of God, afraid of me. Yes, that's Alexander Pope. So today we will discuss Alexander Pope and some of his important quotes. The Alexander Pope was a very famous poet, translator, and satirist of Enlightenment era. He was born in 1688 and died in 1744. He was a very popular and famous poet, critic of his age. First of all, we will discuss Neoclassic age. Yes, he belongs to this Neoclassical age. In this age, we have three other ages also. Restoration age, Augustan age and age of sensibility. And all ages are leaded and dominated by different poets and different writers of the time. First, Restoration age, which is 1660 to 1700, which is leaded by or we can say dominated by John Dryden. Then we have Augustan age in 1700 to 1745, which is dominated by Alexander Pope. Next, we have age of sensibility, 1745 to 1788, which is dominated by Dr. Johnson, Dr. Samuel Johnson, very famous critic of his age. Some of his important works are as Sorrels, Winds and Forest, An Essay on Criticism, an essay on man and an epistle to Dr. Arbaka. In our syllabus of PE second year English honors, we will discuss an epistle to Dr. Arbaka. This is the syllabus of BA first year, second semester, not second year, second semester of BA first year English honors. Right. We have an epistle to Dr. Arbaka in our syllabus. First of all, we'll discuss on Alexander Pope, what kind of person he was. He was a very famous critic and writer of his age and known for his numerous translation of Homer's work like Elid and All right, Odyssey. so we will discuss this poem. The first part of this poem, the poem opens with Pope ordering John, a servant, to shut the door. Pope is afraid of letting in the Birding poets who are like dogs. He asks John to tie the knocker of the door. He finds that poet with paper in their hands and fire in their eyes. Pope is not left alone. Whenever he goes, he is followed by the budding poets. They come into his house by climbing the wall and shrubs. They get into his chariot and into his boat also. They do not leave him even at prayer. Everyone blames Pope in some way or other. Pope finally addresses Dr. Arbat Nod as friend of my life. He says, friend of my life to Dr. Arbat Nod. Pope finds his friend's illness and the troublesome poets as plague. Pope is confused on what to do and what not. If he appreciated their poetry, the overflow with more poems. If he says something negative about their poetry, they feel hurt. Pope gives the advice of Horace to the new poets. He asks them to wait for nine years before publishing a poem. The writers are unable to accept this advice. They ask Pope to make some corrections in, his, in their poems. They also try to bribe him. Some poets also blackmail him. In second part, we have the starting when the Pope talks about the danger of being popular. Pope elaborates on the comparison of Midas. He ridicules the poetesters by using Midas' image, which ultimately represent unrelatively. Pope scores a few poets like Gawley, 
hardly at this point albert not wants pope not to use the names in his poem he advises pope to be prudent albert not ridicules pope that he is twice as tall as pope but he never uses any names pope is angry again he is willing to be honest he claimed that he would not be called as cruel when he calls a fool as a fool he then talks about how a few dramatists approach to recommend scripts which are rejected by the theaters and production companies they all are flatterer according to pope in third part this part takes about pope's life as a writer he starts explaining why he writes he says that he wrote not out of any compulsion he found it hard to learn numbers but it is not hard for him to write poetry nobody asked him to write poetry but he did it by himself he writes because his friends like swift congreef and other enjoyed reading his poetry he did not write poem for his personal reasons like loving his wife arbat not ask why pope publishes his work then pope says that because his friends enjoyed reading this his poetry they praise his works even tried and encourages pope to write and publish poems so pope published them in fourth part fourth part of this poem discusses about why pope attacked other poets in his satires pope says that he does not care a little for those who find fault with him he called them as donkey and fools he sometimes tried to be friendly with them he tried to take them out for a dinner in spite of all these some cheap critics criticizes him pope says that if their criticism is correct he would readily accept it pope satirizes ambrose philip ambrose is a plagiarist he copies work from greek literature and earns money if he attempt to be original he will not cross eight lines a year pope then criticizes addison addison according to pope is genius he is a good writer his defect is that he wants to dominate the literary world he thinks that he is the greatest of all the writers pope called addison a coward because addison attacks many writers but he fears being attacked by them lord halfrex is next lord halfrex loves being flatter he helps the poetaster who flatter him in the fifth part of this poem this part describe pope's current attitude toward life and career pope asked the poetaster to let him leave live in a peaceful manner he says that he lives in depth he is someone normally who prays to god regularly he says that only liars will fear his satire and attacks a man of good intention and honest behavior need not fear him in sixth part of this poem pope attacked lord harvey in the name sporus when arbut not hear the name sporus he starts scolding him scolding him scolding to pope right sporus is a man who drink the milk of a donkey he is capable only of killing a butterfly with his wheels he is such a senseless person that he is not able to distinguish satire and other kind of poem if pope is paragon of independent judgment harry is a man who will say anything to please the people at court and in government 
in the last part of this poem part 7 is pope's final draft of his self portrait summing up the virtues he wants albert not to believe he has pope says that he has never been a worshipper of fortune he is a bold and courageous he has never flattered anyone for selfish reason he attacks his enemies and critics he claims that he was brought up well by his parents his parents are peace loving they are good citizen of england they lead a happy domestic life pope wants pope also wants to live a similar life he concludes the poem by praying that arbet not should lead a happy peaceful and prosperous life so with this we have the end of this poem if you like this video share with your friends and subscribe to this channel thank you so much for watching